Good morning and welcome to the Covert Knits podcast. My name is Abigail Covert. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today is Sunday, August 16th, and I'm coming to you from Omaha, Nebraska. I want to give a quick shout out to all of the new viewers who've stopped by to check out the podcast, and then a warm welcome to all of the returning viewers. Again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my podcast and like, subscribe, comment, anything like that. It really does mean quite a bit to those of us sitting on the other side of the camera. So thank you again. And I hope that you guys are all doing well right now. I know things are crazy in the world. So I hope that you're staying sane with your knitting and your crafting and your making. And that I can give you just a little bit of distraction for, you know, however long it takes to get through all this stuff I have to chat with you about today. So today we've got uh, three finished objects, uh, three works in progress, uh, tons and tons of stash enhancement because I just can't seem to help myself and uh, we'll talk a little bit about my knitting mojo which has been on the return it's making its way back slowly um, and then just uh, my goals for the week so uh, if that sounds like something that you're interested in stick around and if not thank you again for checking it out we're gonna start this week for with finished objects again I have three so my first finished object is a pair of the paddle mitts. Got them both done here. So this is a pattern by Tin Can Knits. Um, it uses DK weight yarn. Um, and I used a uh, light worsted for this. I used Cascade 220 Superwash in just colors black and white. Um, I've made a lot of these. to trim an end there. Um, I've made a lot of these as gifts in the last uh, six months or so, eight months. Um, these are also another pair of gifts covered in dog hair, of course. So uh, they're quick and easy. Uh, this is something I knit when uh, I just need a little bit of a break, but I'm not ready to cast on a new pair of socks um, because they are so fast. I don't do them two at a time like I do my socks, but you certainly could. Uh, the cuffs are knit on threes and then um, the rest is knit on fives, US threes and fives. Um, yeah, they're very simple. Uh, tin can knits patterns are always really well explained um, and very clearly written. So uh, this is a great one. Again, I've it, it is a paid for pattern, but I've gotten probably eight pairs of uh, mitts that I've knit for as gifts. So it is definitely paid for itself multiple times over. Um, this is the adult small size. It comes in child to adult large. Um, so I think it's five sizes, uh, toddler, child, adult, small, medium, and large. So I knit the adult small, um, but I did add a little bit of length. This, these are for an adult that has smaller hands, much smaller than I do. Um, but, uh, let, uh, circumference wise, but length wise, they are um, a little bit longer. So I knit a little bit of extra length in there. So that is FO number one. FO number two is a pair of socks. I finished my blueberry waffle socks. This is a pattern by Sandy Turner. It is a free pattern. So they're both here. Uh, I used Blue Moon Fiber Arts Socks That Rock Lightweight in colorway Shine, Let Your Love Light Shine. I don't know where the tag is, otherwise I would show you. I used most of the ball. I think I have about 15 to 20 grams left, which is pretty good. I knit the leg um, decently long for me. Um, I don't always knit the legs this long. I love this yarn. I've knit several pairs in the socks that rock lightweight. I have quite a bit more in my stash. I love how it looks on the heel and the toe and the flashing and pooling doesn't bother me. This side has less of the yellow and green on it, but that's okay. So the blueberry waffle socks pattern is a, again, it's a free pattern. It's a simple four row repeat. Um, it's, uh, it's essentially a ribbed pattern with a little bit more um, going on so it has a lot of stretch to it um, so it's a great a great pattern if you like 
ribbed socks um, because you feel like they stay up better, um, this would be a good one to try if you haven't haven't tried it already. I knit these on size US one and a half, which is a 2.5 millimeter. I knit them cuff down two at a time. Um, I did a German short row heel. I'm not sure what the pattern calls for. I think it just says heel of choice. So I did a German short row heel and a semi rounded toe, which is, those are my standards for socks. And those are my blueberry waffle socks. I really like them. The yarn is so soft. Um, I like them, but I did actually make them a little bit big lengthwise. Um, the, see, they're a little, uh, so I think these actually will be a holiday gift. So, which is nice. Um, sometimes I intend things for me, but I enjoy knitting them so much and then um, I'll also get a gift out of them. So that's always a, a plus. Um, my third FO is another pair of socks. I finished my watermelon socks. Uh, this is the Pebble Pattern by Mina Phillip, also known as the Knitting Expat. Um, so it's just got just a little bit of texture there on the front side. Again, there are two of them. Um, and then the yarn here is uh, Knit Circus Yarns in their Watermelon Stripes colorway. I don't know if they still do a watermelon stripe, but they do have a watermelon gradient colorway on their website. But I've had this for quite a while. This yarn has been in my stash for several years. I just used, um, I think it's Knit Pick Stroll Fingering um, as the contrast black. I just have a ball of it that I keep around for this kind of thing. Um, again, the same as the other socks, I knit these cuff down two at a time, um, 64 stitches. I didn't mention that on the other pair, but 64 stitches is the stitch count that I typically use. Um, US one and a half, 2.5 millimeter, um, German short row heel, which is the heel that is in most of Mina's patterns. I'm not sure if it was in this one, but that's, that's the one I use and a semi rounded toe. This pattern is part of her Beyond Vanilla Sock Collection, which is a, a book of, I think it's four patterns. I purchased the whole book. This is the second pair I've made out of that book. Um, I have two more pairs to go. Um, I'm not sure if you can purchase the pattern separately. I'm sure you can now at the time. I know you had to buy the, the book. Um, but this, again, is the Pebble Socks. Um, I just love the little bit of um, texture on the front here and then it's all stock in it on the back so you can kind of see um, I like that you can see how the yarn is going to knit up in stockinette but then it gives you that little bit of um, detail on the front so if you follow along on Instagram on my Instagram account which I didn't say at the beginning but is uh, at covert underscore knits and then you can find me on Ravelry as at covert knits um, but on Instagram uh, I posted a couple weeks ago because I put the heel on the front of the sock, which of course it's only patterned on one side. Um, so these were in the naughty pile for about five, five to seven days um, before I picked them up again. I consider just leaving the heels on the back or on the front um, and having the, the front turn out to be the stockinette side, but um, I knew that would bug me in the end. And these are for myself. I love the yarn so much. I'm, I'm keeping these for myself. I made sure to knit them the, the correct way. Um, the, the Knit Circus yarns, this is the greatest of ease base. I don't know if I said that before. Um, but they come, uh, I purchased the set of, the medium set, which is two cakes. Medium sock set comes in two uh, cakes and it's a total of 75 grams instead of a full hundred grams. Um, and it's, I think it's 150 yards per ball. So it's a total of 300 yards of yarn. Um, so I had just the tiniest little nugget of yarn left, probably five grams, maybe three. Um, I haven't weighed it yet. So not a lot left, um, which is great. I love being able to use up as much as possible. There's enough left that I might be able to put a partial square or a, maybe even a full square, but probably a partial square in my um, sock yarn blanket, which I haven't worked on in forever. But um, so that I do have that as an option uh, with the tiny little bit left over. But I love being able to use up as much as possible. So these are finished object number three. And honestly, I think these are what kind of helped me through the most 
um, with my Knitting Mojo issues that I talked about on the last podcast. Um, because this, they, this yarn, I just wanted to keep going to see how it was going to stripe. Um, the pattern was easily memorizable and very simple to follow. Um, and the yarn was just so much fun. Um, a Instagram friend kind of challenged me to cast on, um, something simple and fun. And this was the project that I picked. And I really do think that this kind of helped me through that slump. So those are finished object number three. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to works in progress. My first work in progress actually hasn't had much. It'll probably look exactly the same as the last time I showed it. Um, and I think this is the, the culprit behind killing my knitting mojo. I love this project, um, but I'm having, uh, it requires a lot of my brain. And so I'm having a hard time focusing. Sorry, there's fuzz all over it. So this is my Kingston tunic. I have it in my Black Lives Matter bag uh, from uh, Neighborhood Fiber Company. I don't think they have these on their website anymore. They were a special, um, a special that they were running. So this is my Kingston tunic. This is a pattern by Andrea Mowry. It is my entry into the Quiet Queers Craft Along. So here it is. I've got two more pattern repeats to go before I split for the sleeves. So I'll come up here. And I am knitting this out of 100% um, lamb's wool from, it's a farm yarn from the Foggy Bottoms Boys Farm. They are a gay queer owned farm in Northern California. Um, so this is my entry again into the Quiet Queers Craft Along and that's how it qualifies. So yeah, this is, I love this yarn. I love everything about this pattern. I'm going to love wearing it. It's just a matter of focusing on the pattern. Here's the yarn and the cake. It's got a beautiful halo. It's so soft. It's not toothy at all. It's not even the slightest bit scratchy. Um, it's fantastic. I am going to live in this pattern or in this sweater this winter as long as I can keep from spilling all over it. Um, so. This is knit on, um, I think it's size eights or nines. I'm not a hundred percent certain. Whatever's in the pattern. You all know I didn't swatch. I just winged it. I'm hoping for the best. Hoping I have enough yarn. I just finished up. I have a, just a little bit left of ball two. Um, and then, so I'll start ball three before I split for the sleeves. And then I've got three more balls. Um, to do the rest of the body, the upper part, the big cowl neck, and the long sleeves. Um, I'm going to do everything but the cowl neck, which I think is how the pattern is written, and do the cowl neck last. Um, I don't need as long of a cowl neck as it calls for in the pattern, so I'll use whatever I have left if I'm running short of yarn um, with the cowl neck. Okay, so that is um, that. I am using Coco Knits stitch markers, or stitch blockers, and um, at, and stitch markers, all of my light bulb stitch markers that are on here, which I have marked um, every uh, repeat of the pattern or every, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I have stitch markers. So I have a whole bunch of them. It, keep, it makes it, um, I, can, I can easily read my knitting, but it means I only have to read a small section of it to figure out if I'm off count at the end of a section. Um, if I'm not where I think I should be, then I can fix it because it should be in that small section. So um, it is really important to be able to read your knitting, but I also use stitch markers so that I don't have to read as much of it. So especially when you have almost 300 stitches on the needle. So that's that pattern. I'm hoping to get back to it this week. Um, I'm hoping that I've worked through whatever my blockage was on that and can get some more work done on it. That craft along goes until September 13th, so I would like to make sure that I have the FO done by then so I can post it. Um, not not for any particular reason, except I just like to participate in that craft along. So, um, okay, so that's wor uh, whip number one. Whip number two is another in the light shawl, which I know I said I wasn't gonna cast on right away, but I lied. Um, I'm housing this in my Lila Styles Meet Me at Luke's bag, 
That's her tag down there. Um, you can find her on Etsy. Everything that I talked about, of course, I never remember to mention this. Everything I talked about for today, anything will be linked in the show notes, um, which are in the description box below. Sorry, let me get all my stuff out for this one. Okay, so this is my in the, my third in the light shawl since quarantine started in March. Um, this is a pattern by Casey Day Crozier. I'm about two thirds of the way done with this one. Um, I love this pattern. It is a paid for pattern. I've knit again three of them there's two options in the pattern fringe and not fringe i know i say that every time i'm knitting the fringe one on this one as well um the fringe is included when you knit it and then you drop stitches to get create the fringe it's a great technique i love doing it um this one is the first one that i'm using three different yarns so this um orange yarn this one right here is hazel knits artisan sock which is um, 90% superwash merino, 10% nylon. And I'm done with that yarn and this is what I have left. So just a tiny little bit. The second yarn is um, Townhouse Yarns. And this is their Grafton 4-ply um, and Colorway Phoenix. Oh, the uh, colorway for the hazelnuts is a one of a kind. This is Colorway Phoenix. Um, it is their 801010 Superwash Merino Cashmere Nylon. So that is the speckle. Let's see here. Worked up. And then the fourth color is from Forbidden Fiber Company, which I bought this a very long time ago. And um, they were called something else then. They were called Forbidden Woolery. So this is a very old tag, but they are Forbidden Fiber Company. And this is their Gluttony Sock Base in colorway Copper Boom, which is a Gilmore Girls reference. For those of you that don't know, which is why it's in my Gilmore Girls bag. So this is the fourth color. And I've just started adding it in there. Or sorry, third color. There's only three colors in this shawl. Don't mind me. Um, this one is so much fun. I cast it on a few days ago and honestly, it just, I can't seem to put it down. I'm really enjoying it. Um, the, I didn't, of course I didn't think to look. I believe the Gluttony Sock is a 7525. Let me verify that. Of course now I can't find the label here. Nope, it's an 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon. So this one is 80-20. So all three of the bases are very different. Um, but I feel that, I mean, the colors work so well together in my in my opinion. And um, you can't really tell. I mean, definitely the one with cashmere is a little bit softer than the merino nylon uh, blends. But uh, in the shawl, you can't really tell. Um, they're both, they're all plied. All three of them are plied. So they're not singles. Um, and it's very rare for me to work a project in different yarns from different companies. I have a thing about wanting everything to be matchy matchy. So that is very rare for me. Um, this is a knit on size US eights and I am using my coconuts needle stoppers for this as well. This will probably done be done by the next podcast because I can't seem to put it down. So that is my in the light shawl. Again, it's the third one. I don't have any colors picked out for another one. So hopefully this will be the last one that I knit uh, for a while. Not that it's not fun, but I think three in about four months is probably enough. Um, okay, so whip number three is just the beginning of a cast on. Um, I have this in my, uh, this is a bag by um, the guys who are now the Bearded Pearl guys, who they have a podcast. Um, you should definitely check it out, but they also make bags. They no longer make bags that look like this, as far as I'm aware, here's the back side. Um, I have several that, uh, with similar prints on them that I purchased years ago when they were, uh, making bags under a different name. They used to be a simpler home, um, on Etsy. Now they're the Bearded Pearl. So check those guys out. I actually ordered another bag from them, but I have not, it has not arrived yet. I just ordered it this weekend. 
<clears throat> so this is my Rift Tea by Jacqueline Cieslak. Well, the start of my Rift Tea. I have just cast on just the back ribbing and just finished that and I'm getting ready to cast on the front. I am knitting this out of Knit Picks Cotlin, um, which is their 70% uh, cotton, 30% linen yarn. Sorry. Mm. There we go. The colorway is cyan. Um, I feel like it is definitely more teal than what it shows on screen. It is very difficult to photograph and record this colorway. Anyway, um, so yeah, this has just started. Um, Jackie is having a knit along or had a knit along. I think it's almost over. I was hoping to participate in that. So I cast this on, but honestly, my brain just wasn't there. So, um, I've had this yarn since last summer. I knit a rift tee last summer in a beautiful soft yellow. Um, and I knew I would want another one cause I wear it all the time. So this is my second one. I'm hoping to get it done. Um, you know, before it's too, too cold. Um, but it, since I didn't really get involved in the knit along, the Kingston tunic has my attention before I finish this one. But this is a good, it's pretty mindless. Once I get the, um, the front cast on and the ribbing done, then it's just round and round, um, bottom up with just a little bit of detailing, not a lot. Uh, definitely not as complicated as the Kingston tunic in regards to what my brain needs to remember. So, um, it'll be a nice, pretty vanilla knitting for a little bit. So... That is whip number three. I don't have a ton on there, um, but I'm hoping to get some work done on that. <clears throat> Obviously, uh, for those of you who have been following along for a while, I have other projects on the needles, but they're just not getting any love right now, so uh, I'm not going to show those to you. Um, so that is all I have for whips and FOs. Next, I have um, a lot of enabling. So if that's not your cup of tea, um, and you're not interested in learning about all the stuff I've been purchasing in the last few weeks, please, uh, I, I totally understand. Um, and I hope, you know, you have a great day, uh, whenever you might be watching this and that you come back later at, you know, for the next episode. So I'm going to grab my, uh, bin of things to show. Hopefully not knock anything over. Oh, oh, oh. I'm so graceful. So this is what I have to show. So let's start with some yarn. So I placed an order with Knit Picks. Again, this is the enabling section. So if that's not your thing, totally understand. So I placed an order with Knit Picks um, for a sweater's quantity of yarn. But of course, when I do that, um, I always look at their Felici and their uh, Dishy because those are um, really good quality yarns uh, for the price point at least in my opinion. Um, so I purchased two skeins of Dishy. Um, this one is Pebble Multi. This is the Dishy Multi. Sorry, they're... Um... So the I love the price point on these. Um, it's 100% cotton. These, I can get two dishcloths out of the pattern I use um, with one ball. So, uh, and it's 190 yards for 100 grams. And then this one is Colorway Kitchenette, which is kind of 70s, yellow, orange, green, a little bit of white. And this one is grays and whites. So I got both of those. And then I also looked at their Felici. Um, and I, I did buy two different colorways. I bought, this one is the Carrot Cake color. And Felici is 7525 a superwash merino nylon um it's 120 or no it's 218 yards for 50 grams i did buy two of each color um because i i find it that i need a little bit more than one skein for uh socks for myself so i bought two of these and then i bought two of this is colorway windbreaker also felici this is their self-striping yarn that they come out with once or twice a year um sometimes they bring back old colors but a lot of times they're brand new colors for each one um, they had lots of beautiful colors. I limited myself to only picking two colors because I was already buying other yarn. Um, but what I went to the website to purchase was a sweater's quantity of this Wool of the Andes Tweed. Um, it's a worsted weight. This is colorway Wellies Heather. And it's a deep charcoal with uh, Tweedy bits in it. It is 80% uh, Peruvian Highland Wool, 20% Donegal Tweed. Um, it is 110 yards for 50 grams. I purchased 20 skeins. 
Um, so 2,200 yards. Uh, and I will be making the Gramps cardigan out of this, uh, which is a tin can knits pattern. So I purchased this yarn with that pattern specifically in mind. I've been wanting to make it for a while, um, and I knew that I wanted a Tweety yarn, but I needed it to be at a price point that I could afford. So I purchased, again, um, I'm trying to be as uh, open as possible about what I purchase. Um, not all of my yarns are budget yarns, but I feel like Knit Picks is a great budget yarn. I'm knitting the 3X size, again, 2,200 yards, and I paid uh, just under $100 for this sweater quantity of yarn, which I feel like for a large size hand-knit sweater in 100% wool, well, wool tweed, um, is, a, is a good price. So um, for me, that was worth the, the cost of it. <clears throat> so that is what I ordered from Knit Picks. I also placed an order with uh, at Tolt Yarn and Wool, um, their online website. They're a yarn store out in the Pacific Northwest. I have looked on their website before. They have a lot of really interesting yarns, um, I but I've never made a purchase from them. But I was looking for specific yarns again for a sweater quantity, and they had what I was looking for. So I am wanting to make um, the Hohi Locatelli Super Simple Summer Sweater, um, which is... Uh, she knit in this yarn from Rechazaria Rosa Pomar, which is a Portuguese yarn. Um, she knit it in their Mungo, I'm, I'm sure I'm butchering that name, their Mungo base, um, which is their worsted weight. And uh, so I got it in the natural color. I believe that's what this one is called. And then this one, it's 001 natural. And then this one is 003 dark blue. It's coming off as very gray, but it is, um, it's definitely a bluey gray. Um, this yarn is made in um, Portugal. It is 240 yards for 100 grams. So it's definitely, I would say, a, a lighter worsted. Um, but I got five of each color for my size, which I can't remember what size I'm going to be knitting. But for my size, it said I needed four of each color. Um, I got an extra one because I think I want to make the length a little bit longer so I got an extra one of each each um each skein was $12 on the Tolt website so I feel like that's a good price for a really good quality yarn it is 100% no I'm sorry it, this is 50% wool 50% cotton um so here it's a recycled wool and cotton yarn entirely spun from pre-consumer waste generated by Portuguese spinning mills mills the wool used in this yarn is sourced in Portugal and or Spain so this will be my super simple summer sweater. But of course, because I was on their website, I couldn't just buy sweater yarn. Um, so uh, Rose, uh, Retrosaria Rosa Pomar has um, a really well-known sock yarn that they make um, that is 100% wool, and it's their Mondem, Mondem base. Um, so I bought two colorways of that. Uh, this one is colorway 204. It's the yellow, pink, blue speckle. Um, and again, this is 100% Portuguese wool. And then this colorway is 210 blue, yellow, gray speckle. So I'm super excited to try these out. I've seen them um, and I've read about them. Also, the shipping was super fast. I ordered them on Saturday. They shipped Monday, I got it Wednesday. Um, in the same, uh, same scenario with the nitpicks. So, okay. So that is what I ordered from there. Um, uh, way back in July, sorry, this is a, a stash enhancement parade. So I apologize. Um, way back in July, um, I was watching an episode of the grocery girls podcast and they were, um, showing some kits for one of Jody's hats. I think it's the slip stitch hat. Um, and they were showing kits from Aves, Fi Aves Fiber Works. Uh, and I really liked the kits and the, uh, the hat is knit with DK and mohair held, uh, uh, slip stitches. So I went on their website and they had kits, um, uh, where you got 50 grams of the DK and 25 grams of the mohair and then you got to pick a matching pom-pom. So I got several kits from them. This one 
is the first one. There's their label. Sorry, it's getting way blown out. Um, this one is, the DK is Rose Finch, um, and it's 50 grams, 114 yards, and the mohair is Pink Cockatoo. It's 72% 70, Super Kit mohair, 28% Mulberry Silk, and it's 25 grams at 250 yards. Um, and then I picked the gray pom-pom to go with that one. This will be a gift. And they all come in these super cute um, bags. So I probably will knit the hats and then use the bags to wrap them in because I like to not wrap things in wasteful paper. So I got a couple more kits. Um, this one is the DK is their African gray. All of their colorways are named after birds um, and it's the pink cockatoo um, mohair again. And then this one has a white pom pom that I'm, excuse me, throwing on the floor. So that'll be a gift as well. And then I got one more. And this one I'm keeping for myself because I love the pat pattern and I would like one for myself. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So this one is the gray is the mockingbird and the mohair is flamingo. And then it comes with a black pom pom. I picked the black to go with this one. So this is the one I'm keeping for myself. <clears throat> So those were, again, I purchased those back at the beginning of July. They did take over a month to get here. I think they might have been dyed to order. Um, I will say my only issue with ordering from this website was I never got a shipping notification, so I wasn't sure where they were, and I, you know, I was at the point where I was going to reach out just to find out, um, you know, if it's a dyed to order and it's going to take several months, that's fine with me. I don't mind. I just like to know that, and I didn't see that it was dyed to order on the, when I ordered it, but maybe I missed it. Um, but I just, I never, I kept checking my email and I never got a shipping notification and then all of a sudden they arrived. So, um, which is great. I'm glad they're here and that they didn't get lost and maybe they did get lost. I'm not sure. Um, okay. So next, um, this is not really yarn related, but, um, a yarny person made them. So I purchased, um, from Amy over at happy little yarn. She has a podcast, um, and an Etsy shop. She is making some masks and I don't currently have to go into the office um, for my day job, but I might at some point. So I wanted to make sure I had some extra masks uh, so I didn't have to wash my mask every night. Um, and we do have a mandate at the office that if you're not at your desk, you have to wear your mask because we don't all have offices. So um, these are the masks I purchased from Amy. So I just thought the prints were really cute. She has some great prints. All of them inside have this marble... Um, so they all have that inside. Um, they're the elastic ones. Um, they're double layer cotton. So uh, they'll be perfect for work. Uh, and I have a few others. So that should, excuse me again. Um, and I probably will end up ordering a few more, but I purchased those from Amy. I love supporting makers um, in the community and uh, I really enjoy watching Amy's podcast. So and there we go. I, may, I got those. Um, I also, on the last podcast I showed, I purchased um, bags from the Nodding Knitting Sack. It's an Etsy shop. She makes inappropriate bags, which I love. So uh, this is inappropriate. So if that's going to offend you, please, please turn away um, on the outside. This is her fuzzy ball sack um, on the outside. Are just, you know, nuts. Um, and then... Again, please, please, please turn away if this is going to offend you. This is what the inside is. Be quick about it. Um, bag like this. Put your project in there. It's definitely big enough for one, possibly two, two skein project. Um, so, yeah. I'm super excited about that. So, Naughty Knitting Sacks on Etsy. She's got this size. She's got bigger. She also has sacks that are not naughty she's got lots of um superhero and other fandoms so if that is something you're interested in but you don't want a naughty knitting sack um check her out um okay uh, i also purchased some stitch markers um from a stitch marker maker that i've been following on etsy for a long time um, they're Gilmore Girls themed because I have all these Gilmore Girls bags so i thought i would get some stitch markers the shop is a needle runs through it and again, these are Gilmore Girls themed. So Gilmore Girls, there's the um, 
Luke's Dragonfly. So there's several. Um, what's that last one say? Uh, where you lead, I will follow. Um, yeah. So uh, these are just something fun for myself. Again, it's a needle runs through it. And she has all kinds of fandom stitch markers. Um, they're the, you know, the wooden ones, so they're super lightweight. Um, these are probably my favorite if I'm going to have stitch markers that aren't the light bulb shaped ones. Um, these are my favorite style. So I purchased those. Um, way, way, way back in May, um, the Quiet Queers Craft Along, which is what I'm doing my Kingston tunic for, uh, posted that they had swag. Uh, for this year's knit along or craft along. Um, and then it got post, the craft along got postponed. It was supposed to start in June and then it got postponed till July. Um, but I purchased swag and I totally forgot that I purchased it. So, um, I was super excited when that showed up in the mail this week. I had no idea it was coming because I had completely spaced that I had purchased this. So I purchased my shirt. That's what I'm wearing. Uh, quiet queers craft along. Um, and they had, uh, so many options. I'm not sure if they still do, but their website is linked below. Um, if there's a bit, if you can still shop their merch, um, it'll be linked in their website. Um, I got the knitting one and the bisexual pride one with the quite queer scrap along. You could, I mean, every type of making, um, all different, uh, pride flags were available. So it was a lot of fun, um, to go through there and look. So I purchased that. This is the shirt I got. Um, I also purchased, a tote because everybody needs more bags that has all the crafts on it and then the rainbow quiet queer craft along it's just a regular old canvas tote no pockets or anything but it's a nice uh size it's got a box bottom on it um so yeah this will be a great tote i'll use this a lot um to carry things to and from work when i do have to go back to the office so that is the tote i got from them and then i also purchased um, a, I also purchased an enamel pin. So I got this and I'm going to stick this on one of my bags. Let's see if I can hold that up without dropping it. So they're quite clear as crap along with the rainbow pattern on it. So I'm super excited about that. I'd totally forgotten about it. It's kind of nice to get surprise packages in the mail. And finally, my final uh, purchase. Sorry guys. So many. Um, I purchased this, this couple week, uh, week or so ago, um, neighborhood fiber company, which you all know is one of my favorite yarn shops in Baltimore. Um, they had, um, they advertised on their Instagram for the, uh, they had some Hohe and co bags coming to their shop in a special colorway. Um, I have not purchased a Hohe and co bag. I wanted one for a while, but nothing had really jumped out at me as what I wanted um, to purchase. They are not, they are a luxury item. They are not inexpensive. Um, so I knew I wanted to find one that was what I wanted uh, before I spent the money on it. So I uh, saw this pop up on their Instagram feed and in their newsletter, um, which I'm subscribed to. And I immediately went over to the shop and was able to snag one. So this is, um, it came in, it came from, um, neighborhood fiber company, um, but it is a Hohe & Co bag and they had a special colorway for them, which was purple. So it came all wrapped up like this, um, beautifully wrapped up. And I purchased the BA, the BA bag, which I think is their, like their first and probably their most popular bag from Hohe & Co in this stunning royal purple. So, um, if you haven't seen these before, they have these leather straps that you can, or this leather strap that you can take off the rivet there and you can put it on here and then it makes a handle that way. Um, or you can keep it on the other way. I'm not sure how I'll use it yet. I have not put anything in it yet. I will. Um, it's a beautiful suede. Um, this is 100% handmade in Argentina. Um, it's got a, a, a heavy canvas inside. There is a pocket inside. Um, it's definitely a, a two, a one or two skein project bag. I mean, I could 
probably shove a three skein shawl on here because I don't, I'm not really careful about that, but it's definitely one or two. Um, and a nice heavy duty zipper. So I am thrilled with this project, um, or this purchase. Um, I forgot it also has a uh, lobster claw inside of it. So you can put your keys or whatever if you want to use this for more than just knitting. Um, so yeah, this is my big purchase. This, I know it seems like, but I have, it's been two weeks and some of this stuff was purchased quite a while ago and just arrived. Um, but that's really no excuse. I've been purchasing like crazy. I have tons more. If I, if I wait another two weeks to podcast, you'll see another pile just as big because I keep purchasing like crazy. Um, so yeah, this is my BA bag. I'm in love with it. I can't wait to start using it. I wanted to show it off on the podcast before I started. Um, it's gorgeous. Uh, and the quality is amazing. I definitely would purchase another bag from Hohenko. I mean, not immediately. I understand, again, that they are um, a luxury item. They are handmade. I love the work that Hohenko is doing in Argentina to support locally handmade. Um, so I think that that's fantastic. Um, but it is definitely more expensive than uh, just one of the other bags, you know, a, a, a fabric bag that you purchase. So um, definitely want to um, make sure that I'm making the purchase uh, thoughtfully. So that is my final project or stash enhancement. Okay, so that I have talked and talked and talked and I didn't think I had anything to talk about this week. So my knitting slump uh, that I've talked about, I'll just go over that really quick. Um, on the last podcast, it has, uh, obviously I got three projects finished. Um, I, I'm not completely through it, but things are looking up. I'm knitting more regularly, um, without having to kind of force myself for a while there. I was forcing myself to knit for 30 minutes every day just to keep up the practice. Um, I don't, I'm no longer having to do that. I'm not knitting as much as I was, but definitely on the upswing. So I'm hoping my mojo is, um, coming back from the vacation it took, um, and that, you know, I'll be back in full swing here in the next couple weeks. So I'm super excited about that. Um, my knitting goals are to just keep going. Um, I do, I want to cast on another pair of socks. If you'll notice, I didn't have any socks cast on right now. Um, and then my focus is going to be the Kingston tunic. Um, I know that my In the Light shawl, I don't even have to focus on that. It's, I'm it's so enjoying knitting it that it will essentially knit itself. So I'm going to focus all of my knitting mojo with that returns on my Kingston shawl or Kingston tunic because I would love to get that uh, finished up um, or at least to the point where I feel like I'm making good progress on it. So that is what I have for you this week. Um, I hope that wherever you are, whenever you're watching this, that things are going well for you and that you uh, are staying safe and healthy and remember to uh, figure out how if you are in the States you're going to vote this fall. Um, no matter how you vote, make sure that you're figuring out how that's going to happen for you. And I hope that you all just continue on. And until I talk to you soon, or until I talk to you, have a good one. Bye.